Today, I wanna to talk about how you can succeed as a race driver. Race drivers, it's Enzo with the Race Driver Coach Show. I'm on the road again in the corner of a hotel room. So if you're listening on the podcast, the sound quality is going to be terrible because I'm just using my iPhone without a microphone. So it, you'll have to listen through that and just focus on the content because what I want to tell you today is vital if you want to succeed as a race driver. Now to give you, before I share the metaphor, what we're going to talk about today, I want to give you a background. Now I've been a coach, a performance coach, a driver coach, a, a, a scout for race drivers for the F1 teams or the junior teams for over 20 years now. And in that time, I've learned what it takes to succeed in motorsport. I'd have to be stupid to ignore it, right? It's pretty obvious. You see the patterns and you see where the drivers end up over that period. And the kind of things that I've learned from there on the mental side, I'm teaching to the business world. And I've been doing it for a while. So I get CEOs and, and executives learning the same mental skills that a race driver's got. So performing on demand, dealing with pressure, overcoming mistakes, trying to end a bad run and get back in the flow so they can start to make good decisions, making decisions in such a volatile, dangerous arena, in a competitive environment, that's big. So every decision you make has got a consequence attached to it, but still being in the rhythm to make these quick decisions. These are things that race drivers do all the time. These are things that top CEOs and executives and entrepreneurs can do. So teaching this crossover between the two sports is valuable. But I wanna bring it back the other way. The things I've learned from the business world that can help a race driver. And that's what I wanna speak about today. And really, it's about you seeing your sport and your career as if you were a company as if you were trying to grow your product or service in a certain industry, but it's doing that within the motorsport industry. And I want you to just approach your sport in that way. Because it's easy for race drivers to just say, I've got to go down to the gym to get fit. I'm going to do some sim work to prepare for the next, to the next race or to work on some mental stuff on the sim. That's perfect. That's part of what you need to do, but that is just training the body and the mind to do what it needs to do when it's on track and preparing. But I would prefer you to attend to all the business sides, the career aspect first, before you go to the gym or on the sim. It's really important because you can be the fittest driver or the fittest person who's really good on a simulator, but you're still not on the grid. I prefer you to be on the grid, unfit, not very prepared, than the other way around. Because you can always catch up in the gym. You just spend six months, three months in the gym on a really good program and you're fit enough to drive. You can go onto the, the sim for three to six months and you'll be fine. So it's, it's you know, it, this is all about prioritizing and making sure that what we teach you today or what I teach you today is getting your head straight. So you see the most vital areas that are really important if you wanna succeed and also holding you accountable. So you can look, upon the four things that we're going to talk about today. You can look at these four things and say, right, I'm looking at it as, as if I was a company in the industry. How well have I done in these four areas? How well am I doing in these four areas? What have I got to do in these four areas next week in order to grow my career? This is what we're going to speak about today. So the four areas, let's start with number one. The first area, which you've heard me say before, is your value in the motorsport world. So I ask you now, what value have you got within motorsport? If people, teams, sponsors were to look at you right now and say, you have got this about you and it's enough for me to give you a drive or let you drive my car or give you money to go racing, what would it be? Think about it. Now, most drivers will say, I want it. I want to work hard and I'll be the best. But that's not enough. They want hard facts. They need to know three things. They need to know, in talking, this is motorsport now, right? The values, the three main values that a driver can have are speed. You're actually fast. So if you're really quick, they can say, right, you're the person I can just plug into the car 
and you're going to win. You're going to put us up the front. It could be a struggling team that's got no results. They need to get the results up there so they can sell themselves because they're a business as well. Sell themselves to other drivers in the future. We need our car to be up at the sharp end. So who's the fast driver that we can employ? Give them a free drive or pay them to get in into our car and put us at the front of the grid. So speed is always going to be something that people want. Sponsors and teams. The second one is cash. Money, moolah. Have you got the money that can fund the team, the car, in order to get on the grid? That is valuable as well, right? This is for a team now. They need drivers paying them so they can run the car and earn money off you, basically, to have it as a business model. So 100 grand is, to, is what you pay a team. 80K is probably spent running the car and 20K is for their profit. Something like that, you know, it's so different everywhere you go. So if you've got the speed or the money or both, man, you're going places. And you know this. This, this bit's obvious. Third thing is knowledge. If you're like a, a seasoned driver or you've driven that car for two or three seasons already, that's valuable. And you're fairly quick. That's valuable to a team as well because they might need the setup knowledge. They might need somebody who's driven that car to show them how they can improve it and, again, get near the front. So, I mean, knowledge is only a tiny one, really, but it's still valuable to some people depending on the situation. So it's speed, money, and knowledge. Speed and money, really, they're the big ones. But it's, it's, that's creating the value within your sport. And I want you to know or to understand which one you're creating. And if you're not creating it, how can you create it? If you think I need to be faster, then I want you to work on that. If you think I need more cash, then you've got to work on that. If you're leading the team just by what you know because of experience, fine, you can lean on it, but still, that's not powerful enough. So you've got to be just like a company with a product or service. You look at your industry and say, right, what are we providing for our clients? In your case, it would be sponsors or teams. For someone who's selling phones, like iPhone, uh, Apple, should I say, they look at their product and say, how is this more valuable than any other out there, than Samsung, than the Nokias, obviously. How can we make it even more valuable to people so they want it? I want you to ask yourself the same about you in your industry, in motorsport. And you've got to make sure you come up with an answer. And if you're finding out that you're not very valuable at the minute, it's like, right, how can I be more valuable? If you're sat at home, you're not racing because you can't afford the expensive championships, okay, I'm going to go to a smaller championship, completely dominate it, even though it's a championship I don't want to do, dominate it so I show people I've got the speed, then that might open up opportunities in the future for the next year. So always think, how, what kind of value? How am I standing out between, from, you know, from me to all the other drivers? Why should a team or a sponsor choose me? The second area to see yourself like a business is your branding. Now, branding to a company, right? Coca-Cola, straight away, when I say Coca-Cola to you, you will have a vision of the brand, of the logo, of that glass bottle, maybe, of the taste. You, you can just see like the half of the logo, maybe down the road, you'll see half the logo from a distance. Bang, you know what it is. You know what it stands for. Same with Apple again. The brand of a company is basically their reputation. This, again, is something that race drivers don't pay attention to. When they go to a racetrack and they're there with the team, your reputation is your work ethic. Your reputation is how you would conduct yourself. If you're a leader, if you're the kind of driver that buckles under pressure or is just spoiled and blaming the car all the time, people label you by personality. We do it with companies. Race teams do it and sponsors do it through the way you act, the way you conduct yourself, the way you work. So I want again you to look back on yourself and say, okay, if I had a brand, and you can ask people this, by the way, if I had a brand, what would it be? When, when people say my name or they hear my name, what do they think? Do they think that's that warrior that we need in our team that is quick as well? You know, if you go back to your value, but he'll lead the team or drive us forward? Or do they see you as just a normal driver, pretty good, not really a brand or a reputation, it's just pretty you know, middle of the road. Be honest with yourself. Your brand, your reputation, what people think about you before you even enter the room, 
and as you enter the room is really important. It's another area I want to make sure that you're conscious of. Each time you talk to a team, think about it, right? This is my reputation that I'm going to speak now. I'm not just going to be messing around my social media. You know, the image is part of it as well. If your social media looks like you're just dicking about all the time, but then you go into F1 teams trying to sell yourself, it's like, pff, I can't have you in my car. You're too much of a risk. Sponsor, you might upset the sponsors at one point. So your brand, the way you conduct yourself and approach your sport is super important. And it's such a small world. If you act up in the debrief area, you know, you're not, you're sort of slouching, you're not very interactive, you're not easy to get, your people skills suck, then you're not going to go anywhere because people tell others this. And it's amazing how it gets around in motorsports so quickly. Your rep is everything. Your branding, in other words, is everything. I want you to make sure that you create the brand that makes it easy for you to sell yourself, just like a company would. Number three, as I briefly mentioned there, sales. Now, if you are fast, if you've got money, if you have got a good reputation, the only thing left is really to sell yourself or one of the main things. If you can't even talk to people, you can't pick up the phone to sell yourself, then what good are you? People are not going to always phone you. You've got to make sure you're the one that's pushing your name forward. Now, can you imagine some of these companies that we'll... We go to every single day and we use the products every day. If they never, ever advertised or if they never had any branding like we spoke about before, and they had no presence in the industry and you had to really dig deep to find them, to even get in touch with them to get their product, they wouldn't be very successful. Okay, I know Tesla doesn't advertise and they're famous for it, but the branding and Elon, that's through the roof. So they don't need to advertise. It's very closely linked. But you selling yourself, picking up the phone, giving, you know, putting a sponsorship prospectus together, a brochure to say this is what we can do for companies. This is all part of sales. And if you can't shout as loud as you can from the rooftops like a Muhammad Ali does about what you can provide for people, then who's going to do it for you? You must be good at driving people's emotions, at bringing attention to yourself and communicating it in a way that shows the value to other people. If you can't do that, you're going to be invisible. And anybody who's invisible doesn't last long in this sport. I want you to remember that. So make sure that you look at yourself now. Look at how you've been. Have I been selling enough? Ask yourself, be honest. And if not, it's time to turn up the volume in that area. And the fourth thing to being like a business is staff. Who's helping you? It's really important, like Steve Jobs said, I don't know why I keep referring to Apple in this, in this video, but Steve Jobs said, I'm only as successful, this is paraphrasing, as the people that work for me. I'm only as clever as they are. Because everybody has different skills. So if you're a driver who's really trying to carve an industry, but you're doing it all on your own, you're trying to spin plates, you're trying to go to the gym, the sim, learn business, learn sales, call everybody up, then be ready for the race weekend, it's difficult to do. So... Like a company, who is helping you? If you've got a coach, if you've got a fitness trainer, if you've got a manager, then you've got to make sure that they're the good ones. You've got to make sure that you're driving them and motivating them and holding them accountable as well. Because the more people you've got helping you, the more chance you've got of succeeding. Because they've all got skills that you haven't, right? So if you're not very good at selling and you know it, you're like, right, who is good at selling? Is it my uncle? Is it my dad? Is it someone I'm actually going to employ to sell myself to teams, to get me these opportunities, to help me sell myself to sponsors, to get me opportunities in that area? If so, go do it. We'll always have downfalls. We can't be perfect and good at everything. And we haven't got time to do everything. So the more people you can get to join your army, your people that are going to help you succeed in racing, the much more chance you're going to have a success. And it's just like a company again. As soon as a company gets staff, they grow. They get a sales force. They grow. They get somebody doing accounts. Great. Now the owner can spend less time doing the Excel sheets and accounts and spend time on growing the business. You're no different as a race driver. So once again, these areas that you see, the value you must create, your branding, your sales skills, and the staff, the people helping you. This is all why you are so similar to a company. 
So now you know, now you can sort of see, right, these areas are important. I know I've got to be good in these areas in order to move forward. Take a look back now over the last month in these four areas and just score yourself. Monitor, review how you've been in these areas. Am I, have I shown I'm fast? Have I really got the cash? Have I shown people I've got the knowledge in order to help? You could be want to be a coach. You could be coaching. That's where knowledge comes, right? You could coach within a race team and then hopefully get a drive through that. In other words... Get the odd drive where you jump in the car, get to know the team, and that can open up doors. You never know. So that's one area. Now, branding. Have I got the reputation that I really need? If not, what are we going to do in the next few months, weeks, year to get this better? Selling. Am I talking to enough people? Do I know how to sell? Am I good at it? And if not, what's the staff, the people that can help me do this? You push on all these four areas. You really treat your racing career like it's a company see it as an enterprise in an industry and just run it that way you're the ceo make it happen see you next time